You want to talk about why the Western societies will not fall? I'll give yeah. you a couple examples. The F-15, the F-16, the F-22, the F-35, M-1 Abrams tank, the Blue Water Navy, the KC-135, the KC-10, the ICBM structure. You're saying all the money the global, we spend on defense. And the <laughs> global positioning system. You want to come for us, you more than <laughs> welcome to. The United States dollar is backed by the military, and as much as you guys want to sit there and complain, I'll say this right now. There is one country on this planet that has stealth capability. There's one country on this planet that I think has functioning ICBMs. I don't think Russia has a single functioning ICBM. And there is one country on this planet that actually has a functioning Blue Water Navy. There's only one country. There's only a few countries on this planet that have uh, air refueling capability. And they, the only reason why they have them is because we sold it to them. If you guys want to come for us, you can. The United States could take on every country in the entire world militarily at the same time would be fine. Now, if you want to say cyber terrorism or there's a moral decay from the inside, Cool. Make that argument. The United States is not going to fall. Not in our lifetime. Not in the next 20 lifetimes. You want to talk about why the... All right. Shalom. First and foremost, all praises and glories unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahushai, Bahashim, Harachakodash, the belongs to the apostles and the elder bishops of the great millstone who teach God and rule well. And greetings, salutations, blessings, and much love unto you, hopeful elect out there. Shalom unto you. All right. The pride of this man is out of control. All right. This man is out of control, and pride was one of the reasons why the Edomites are going down. Now, I don't know what nation this man is from, but he clearly has the pride of an Edomite on him. All right, he had the pride of, 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 of Babylon the Great, which is a code name for America, okay, or, or, or Egypt, again. All right, so I'm going to bring out a few precepts and show another uh, clip or two. Matter of fact, I'm going to go straight to the clips. Bear with me. All right. And this is uh, the drive.com, the war zone. It says Russia has built its first production batch of Poseidon nuclear torpedoes in the report, right? The Poseidon long range nuclear powered nuclear warhead equipped torpedo is one of Russia's so called super weapons. Now, what well, he's not, that guy on the other video is not talking about. I don't even know who that guy is. But he made an outlandish statement. He clearly does not understand or know prophecy. Well, this is in the news just yesterday or within the last couple of days or, you know, just uh, Monday or whatever. It said right here, um, a report in the Russian media claims that the first production examples of the country's Poseidon nuclear power, nuclear tipped, ultra long endurance torpedo have have been built. Okay, and we should understand that, that Russia and America have been long-time war enemies, okay, since the Cold War, you know, and everybody underst well, should understand by now that, that these are two prophetic countries, Gog and Magog and Babylon the Great, okay, the, the virgin daughter of Babylon the whore. All these are names uh, for America. Speaking of Babylon the Great, um, Sodom and Egypt, Okay, and particularly Egypt is what I'm gonna gonna show you in the scriptures. That's talking about America, and it is also um gonna be destroyed. All right, as well as Babylon the Great in Revelation. All right, so um, this is just saying it's just it's just um, ironic, if you will, <laughs> that this is in the news. All right, but it's not irony. This is actually for a reason. All right, because the pride of the people are are out of control, man. They really think this place can't be touched because we spend so much on military. Why would you have to spend so much on military if you if you were doing the right things in the earth? This place, and then he says moral decay and all that. Yeah, that's gonna happen as well. Okay, this place was being dismantled piece by piece. Okay, but at the same time, just like ancient Egypt, but just at the same time, it it has to go to war. Now let's uh let's bring up a few things. All right, so um, just a few precepts. Just try to run through this as uh, quick as possible, so just to just show you, just to, oh Lord, what this is edifying. Uh, Deuteronomy twenty-eight sixty-eight, and the Lord Yahweh, which is the name of the Heavenly Father, will bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now we know ancient Egypt; the Israelites walked out of ancient Egypt. Okay, and uh, now we're going, and we walked down into ancient Egypt. This time we're, we're um we went into it with ships, and what was it? It was a captivity and a bondage. What ships were those? The slave ships. Okay, 
He said, By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, our homeland of the land of Israel. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you or save you, right? And uh, we're, we're still found over here in this captivity in, in the Americas. So that shows you uh, the time period and it links you right to where we're at. We're in Egypt again. Okay. Uh, another land of, of slavery and bondage. And that's what we did in ancient Egypt, building those pyramids and establishing their cities. All right from there. Second Exodus 15. Behold, in 10, it says, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. This is the new Egypt now. This is a prophetic uh, chapter and uh, that Ezra was breaking down in 2nd Edris, the 15th chapter. It says, And I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. Okay, showing you that this is a different Egypt. A different situation, a different bondage, all right? And will destroy all the land thereof. Yeah, this one over here in America. Okay, Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seeds shall fail through the blasting in hell and with the fearful constellation. And that fearful constellation um, wasn't the same constellation that, that, that happened to uh, ancient Egypt. Now, were the chariots there? Yeah, the chariots will be here. On this one again, too, but the missiles will be here on this one. Okay? And that's the blasting in hell. All right? And it goes into that. Now, I believe, uh, let's see if I got the 16th chapter next. Either way, I should just grab that. Um, I'll start at uh, verse, I'll straight to the point, verse 13, second, that's just 16 and 13 for stronger the right hand that bended the bow. And who. Who, who's the right hand that bended this bow? The, the Heavenly Father. Yeah, he put it in. You go to, to Isaiah, the 54th chapter, and it shows you that he created the smith for his weapons of indignation, okay, for his weapons of, of war, okay, the Heavenly Fathers, okay, to, 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 to push his agenda, all right? It says, I have created the smith. It says, for stronger the right hand that bendeth the bow, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss, when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world and showing you that this is missiles being shot off from the ends of the world. Okay. Okay. Showing you that this is not a game, man. Okay. Sent upon earth and shall not return again. All right. That was that point. Yeah, you could talk about, but then you go to Ezekiel 38 and there's a ton of all Russia being a garden to those other nations, man. All right. This is the book of Revelation. I tried to stick to the prophetic chapters, particularly Revelation. Um, try to bring up some of these so you can't be, oh, that's past already. We should all understand Revelation hasn't happened yet. All right. Um, I'll start at verse 7, Revelation 11, 7. And when they sh shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. All right. These Edomites... And their world uh, power system is going to come across against the, the men of the Lord. All right. So, and their dead bodies shall lie. Or the Israelites, Jacob's trouble says, and the, their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. And this, whenever you had a place that was uh, a captivity like Egypt for the Israelites and also like Sodom, this is the place, man. You haven't had a time where Egypt... Uh, or any landmass considered like in Egypt was uh, also like Sodom and Gomorrah. But this plan America is now. Okay, with, with as the man said, moral decay and all of that. All that's happening here, man. It said where our Lord was crucified. All that's happening here. It says, And they of the people and kindreds of tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three and a half days and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And that's talking about... Um, how spiritually dead we are over here. Okay, it's a long time without without the Lord in our lives, but now we're, we're coming back. Okay, it says, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. What's the two prophets? A northern and southern kingdom. Okay. 
that's enough of that. Let's see. Um, then we want one in the fourteenth chapter, Revelation fourteen. I'll start at verse seven again. It says, "Uh, saying with a loud voice, fear the Most High and give Him your glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters." And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she, that great whore, right, made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And all this democracy that, that has been spread across the world, man, uh, America's been responsible for, okay? And you other nations had your God and had your belief system, and you, you were sticking to that until America got in. Into you know in these embassies and went went around the world, pillaging and whatever else and, and spreading this democracy, man, creating a decay over in your 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 parts of the world. Okay, it says, uh, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, "If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the." And we see it in America happening now. It's in the earth, but we see it also happening in America. Talking about this MOTB system, this image of the B system, okay, with this implant, okay, to say it that way. It says, um, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into a cup of his indignation, and he shall tor be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And that's important because when I read Second Edges, the 13th chapter, it shows you all those, that Navy and that Air Force and all of that is going to still try to fight against our Lord. And you can say that they are the top military, but all the militaries are going to turn on Yahweh Shai and the angels, man, and still lose. I'll get that before I go, Lord willing. It says, uh, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in the image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Okay, now going up to that, it's talking about um, yeah, after after World War Three, man, after the uh, the, the will be here to deliver us at that same time, as the, the smoke of this place is destroyed, and all these other nations are gonna are gonna come and try to fight against Yahushai. Okay, but this place, Babylon the Great, aka uh, the U.S., aka um, Sodom and Egypt, will all be destroyed, man. All right, period, point blank. Go to the 18th chapter right quick. Um, yep. Um, I'll read verse 2. And he cried with the Revelation 18, 2. It says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and become the habitation of devils and every, excuse me, in the hold of every foul spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Okay, desert, desert creatures. Okay, and that didn't happen to ancient Babylon. That place is still inhabited. It's the landmass of uh, Iraq today. Okay, that's still inhabited. This place will, 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 be, will become uh, uninhabited. It says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. All the things that America's selling. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. And that's when the elect are beamed up out of here to escape the judgment of, of, of the missiles from the other countries, man. For her sins have reached into heaven, and the Most High have remembered her iniquities. Uh, on the outside of what they do militarily in the world, and what the end of moral decay has happened on the inside, like he was speaking of. To reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I said a queen, and am no widow, and see no and shall see no sorrow. And this is what the people even begin to say. Oh, this place will never go down, never in this lifetime, never in the next twenty lifetime, because we're so such a head militarily. Well, you're not looking at the famine that's being orchestrated over here. You're not looking at at the at at the uh, the civil rising that's happening over here. 
all of these things are taking this place out. The economy is collapsing. Everything, man. Okay, this place is, is is done for, man. You can you can see it. It's already circling the drain. Okay, but they still have that price. And therefore, shall her plague come in one day, death and mourning and famine. All these things are going to happen in this place. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the is the Lord Yahweh who judges her. Okay, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, got in bed and did did deals with America, okay, business or whatever you want to call it, um, shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, when they see America being destroyed. Verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. All right, and I'm going to stop that there, but you can keep reading. All right, and you even go down and talk about the souls of men in verse 13. That's the Israelites, man, that was over here being traded. Okay, being destroyed. All right, so from there, let's go to Revelation 14. I might have slipped past this when I went there. I did read. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. Well, let me let me bring this video first. I got something real quick. Bear with me. Uh, the original movement towards the dark side of the Earth it should be cresting the horizon about 15 degrees east of the starboard PV rays. There it is. We're getting your feet, Sat One. Come in, Houston. Uh, are you getting this? Copy that, ISS. Video B from Sat One is clear. Sat One, keep tracking the bogey. We're looking into it. Stand by. Mm-hmm. Houston, we're not taking any satellite bosses today, are we? This is just one. ISS Houston, stand by. We may have a problem here. Now it's just a scenario of one missile hit, and you saw in in it that it was uh, America that was being hit. Okay, the East Coast. All right. And a lot of these scenarios showing that America's gonna be destroyed, man. A lot of movies, a lot of AI scenarios, you know, a lot of uh, apocalyptic movies. This place is being destroyed, man. All right. Anyway, so while after while that's going on. The inside, man, that the, the, these other nations are going to see. This is actually the war in heaven in 2nd Edges, the 13th chapter, showing you uh, uh, that the nation's going to still try to fight against Yahweh Shai and the angels, man. Because the angels, yeah, they got all that aircraft, and you think that's the great F-22, F-35, F-16, and all of that. Okay. Well, the Heavenly Father's got something for that, okay? 2nd uh, Edges 13, I'm going to start at verse uh, 3. It says, And I beheld and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. <clears throat> That's Yahweh Shai and the angels in their chariots, okay? So the, the Heavenly Father's Air Force, all right? And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. And what, whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, they all burned that heard his voice. Like as the earth faileth when it filleth the fire, yeah, it, it burned it as he spoke, or as it, as as a uh, as his blast came out. Anyway, it says, and after this, his, I beheld, and lo, there were gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue that man that came out of the sea. Okay, and they tried to subdue uh, Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, with their with their air forces, because they're gonna be in the midst of. Jehoshaphat, when all of this is going on, fighting World War III. All right, this is all a big event that's going to be happening all in one time period. Okay, and we're in that time period. Okay, it says, And I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. This is that great mountain. It, it, the, the, we call the fathership, okay, the, 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 the huge chariot that will be there. Okay, 
and I beheld, and lo, and there's a bunch of smaller chariots that'll be there as well. Grave and flew upon a great mountain and flew up upon it, and I would have seen the region or a place where out the hill was graven, and I could not, because it went beyond the, the horizon line. Could see the other side of the chariot because of the horizon line. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, and yet there's fight. The Heavenly Father wants this fight. So you can bring all them F-35s, long-range missiles, uh, aircraft. You can bring all, all your stealth, and you can bring all of that, your Navy. You can bring all of that, man. It means nothing. This is technology from the, the, the Heavenly Father, all right? And these other nations still going to get some shots off, man. Okay? Enough to destroy the landmass over here. It says, uh, And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war, but only I saw that out of his mouth, as it had been a blast of fire, and how out of his lips the flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. He's shooting off lasers, man, from these chariots. All right. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude that was prepared to fight. Okay, the other warriors of the earth, man. And burned them up, every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude was nothing to be perceived. But only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was sore afraid. Yeah, man, so all these nations going to get wiped out. These NATO nations, all these nations that raise up against Yahweh Shai Boat, the Warsaw, all of, all of that, man. All these earthly nations going to run up against Yahweh Shai and lose, man. All right, so that was very boastful what he said. But, hey, what do you expect coming out of America, man? All right? And with these Edomites ruling. So anyway, with that, I'm going to close out giving all praises and glories unto Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Arachak Wadash, double honor to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone. Greetings, salutations, blessings, and much love unto the elect. Until the next one, Shalom.